Hi guys, I'm Sam from the Unity of Life and in the last video that we did we looked um, at wolves and we looked at um, releasing them back into the wild and we talked a little bit about the transportation so in this video we are going to quickly because I'm melting and dying in my little sauna that's also known as shed we're going to quickly talk about the Transportation Act um, of England because it does vary but depending if you're in Scotland or if you're in Northern Ireland or if you are in Wales um, or of 2006 and this obviously comes under the Welfare of Animals Act of 2006 so let's get into it so the orders for Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales are all very similar to the England order so the council regulations also cover that the transportation and welfare of animals within the European Union or our legislation must be equal or better than this regulation. This piece of legislation applies specifically to live vertebrate animals, so any animal with a backbone, such as livestock, exotic animals in zoos and um, and that's about basically it. Um, so the first clause of this order covers the animal transportation. Ensuring the safety of an animal throughout the journey. The journey starts um, with the preliminary checks of the vehicle and containers. So you, know, you make sure that the vehicles and the containers are up to scratch, that there's no maintenance that needs to be done uh, and carried out. If there is any maintenance that needs to be carried out, you can carry that out before you... Uh, attempt to move the animal so no journey should be taken if it will cause the animal injury the animal must be fit for travel and be offered food and drink during the rest stops okay just like you would because it's a long journey it's going to need food and it's going to need drink because otherwise you, you've got to go back then you're going to find a dead animal um which you don't want fitness to travel has a number um of rules and the main one being no animal shall be transported unless it is fit for the intended journey which should just be obvious and all animals shall be transported in conditions guaranteed not to cause them injury or unnecessarily suffering so other rules include injuries um, walking without pain and unassistant not to travel if pregnant um, but basically, if they're free more than 90% of their gestation period uh, or are within one week of having the offspring, you know, given birth. If an animal does become injured or ill during the journey, the animals must have immediate veterinary attention. Okay, so the, the next clause in the law covers the requirements for travelling times for animals. This is also to be extended for each species individually because remember, um, different species um, have different requirements. So, the animals must have appropriate bedding, ventilation, food and water. The trailer for the vehicle must have movable partitions that can make separate spaces that are appropriate for the number of species of animals. And the trailer needs to have a light coloured insulated roof, have a navigation system and direct access to the animal. Some exemptions apply for various species such as pigs. Why? I do not know. Um, so CITES also has um, guidelines on how to transport animals as well. Remember we talked about CITES in the last video. Uh, so risk assessments um, and points for live animal transportation to prevent the escape of exotic animals. So equipment risk rates is available and serviceable to the species. Vehicle maintenance checked for integrity um, of the sides, the roof, the floor, the gates, the doors, the ramps and the lock injuries to make sure all that is working and nothing is broken so the animals can't easily escape and hurt itself and everybody around it. The vehicle itself is appropriate to transport the species for the weight, the size and the quantity. And the container security is appropriate for the species. Strength, st stability, safety in size are paramount. Check for damage to the sides, floor and roof. Uh, the surfaces in the containers must be appropriate for the species. 
check the ventilation holes have not caused weak points in the containers construction because like i said you don't want that to hurt itself or to hurt any of the crew on board containers are strapped down to prevent movement and they will not become loose through your vibrations because like i said you don't want the animal to be walking around neither because again it could hurt itself the floor should be anti-slip to prevent an animal from falling over in the case of large animals this may damage the container or break it free from strapping down the container the partitions and the compartments must be strong enough to support the weight of an animal, their size and their quantity. Partitions and comp compartments are secure using correct fittings and prevent vibrations which may slacken them. Methods of placing the animal in the con into the container in an uh, area with double door system it's appropriate to the species so if one door fails and opens um there's still another door that's um stopping them from getting out and escaping and again hurting themselves and anybody else on board method of placing the container into the vehicle to ensure that there's no damage occurs to the container or the vehicle the equipment used to guide the animals into the container is serviceable and has no damage I need to uh, the, the joints are secured correctly and the ramps are at an appropriate angle and a fencing is at the correct height appropriate first aid equipment available at the scene of the loading procedure and during the journey in the case of the dangerous exotic animals an appropriate person so trained and licensed is available to shoot the animal in the case of an escape in the open area or confined space where there are people oh, unfortunately um, if you do the your job right then that won't happen and that can be avoided appropriate trained people to be available to the species should accompany the animal e.g. a vet in case of any medical um, emergencies any medical emergencies loading is conducted in a manner which is calm and does not cause the animals to become stressed through fear locks are serviceable used and keys are kept in a secure place fire extinguishers should be fitted to the vehicle and serviceable there should be appropriate warning signs fitted to the outside of the vehicle so people uh, who receive the containers or are there with the vehicle know what animal is on the other side of that door so they can prepare themselves uh, in the best way to remove the animal from the vehicle without hurting the animal or themselves or anybody else in this career so i know this was a very short video but i didn't want to go on about it too much because it's a little bit about love and it can be a little bit boring um and it was just because we covered we mentioned it in the last video so i thought we would cover it in today's video so if you've learned something don't forget to share this with other people so they can learn too if you have not already subscribed then what are you waiting for here's my face click on it subscribe press that notification bell okay and you'll be notified every wednesday and saturday when i upload a video okay i don't bite so if you subscribe that would be great um and i'll put all the other law content videos um in a playlist down here so you can have a look at them and i will see you in the very next video and uh, hopefully um i have more subscribers than viewers because i know I'll, i see you i see you watching these videos and not subscribing so don't forget to subscribe i can't say that enough okay um, like I said, I'll see you in the next video. So, bye.